Hello and welcome. Oh, this is going to be so fun because I've got Natalie Miles with me and it's so funny because this always happens when I have guests. We chat before and we're like, why aren't we pushing record yet? <laughs> so this is another one of those moments where it's like, let's just create this container. Let's dive in and let's push record. So I'm so grateful that you're here and so excited that you've released your first book congratulations oh thank you sweetie yeah it's been wild just there's something about it you know you you envision what it's going to be like to publish your first book and um i never thought i'd be publishing a book in a pandemic so it's kind of uh <laughs> it's definitely been a different experience um yeah. but it's been amazing and i wouldn't have, i wouldn't change it well it's amazing too because the, you know i I've been writing my book during the pandemic. I started writing it like two years ago, like my Saturn return. And then I was like, oh no, I went to Bali to go write my book. And then I had to rush home because coronavirus hit so I can get home. And then I like finished it like during the whole like Black Lives Matter uprise. I was like, okay. Me too. That's when I finished my book as well. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's wild. I think there's just so many of us that have been doing this work that are actually like, truly tapped in because because I do feel like I don't know about you but like 2020 crystal vision has been a year where there's been so much exposed of like what's genuine what's an integrity what's what I call basic bitch spirituality what's like false light what's um love and light spirituality all these like there's so much of this being exposed right now and I just feel like people's bullshit meters are really really strong right now mm. Yeah, and there's more to come, more to be revealed. It's funny because um, we're recording this in October and my I channel an energy forecast theme every month. And the October, the theme for October is the revealing. And um, yeah, we've been, it's such a wild time. It is a wild time, but it's also, yeah, really seeing the spiritual community for what it is um, and the understanding that we can't focus on love and light intuition and that the shadow is important and that we're also here to bring up the shadow parts of the collective and help heal them and, and shine, you know, bring them up to the surface and shine the light on them. It's so important more than ever. Um, and when people say to me, oh, well, why are you talking about politics? Why are you talking about this? Why are you talking about the injustices? Why are you talking about oppression? It's like, because we are human beings having a human experience and you, you can't call yourself spiritual if you're not living in this human plane looking at this stuff. Like, oh, it's just, it has to be done. Tell them. I mean, I'm the same way. To me, it's just been a lot about speaking up and I know a lot of people reach out to me and they're like oh well you're one of the few that's actually speaking truth about what's going on but to me that is what a true spiritual teacher is supposed to do like we are here it's not about the fame it's not about the followers it's not about the blue check mark on social media and like as I record this with you like I'm on social media sabbatical and I pretty much took the whole like I had like only three weeks on social media in September and I'm pretty much taking the whole of October just because one, we're coming up to the election. And while this is after the election, this podcast is coming out, there's still a lot, it's very dense right now. And I think we need to, one, know when to speak up and to share and to educate. And two, when we have a responsibility as leaders, know when to take a break and step back because we've, we've come and been, you know, developed and ingrained in a society that's so go, 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 instant, instant, instant. But we're as you said, we're also humans and we need to know when to take a break, when to slow down. And this thing called technology, computers, social media is still relatively new compared to the eons of yes. humanity. So we're learning how do we adjust, how do we cultivate healthy boundaries and speak up and use this as a platform and an opportunity to really do something as an opportunity to really educate as an opportunity to know when to take care of ourselves, listen to our intuition so that we can consolidate and, and roll through ahead. Yeah. It's so important. As you say, like the break, the break time and the off time is, is also really important. We have been conditioned by society that we do need to be go, 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 go all the time. And also that we, 
we fear taking a break. We fear creating the boundaries. We fear saying no. You know, we're people play. We're we're people pleasers. We have a fear of missing out, and mm-hmm. that social media has become the way into having that connection. So because of that fear of missing out, we then you know, we feel like we need to be on it all the time. And that's just not, that's just not part of human, our bodies. Like we're, and our energetic intuitive bodies need to have that rest. We need to have that recharge, especially with everything that's happening in the collective mm-hmm. news, politics. Um, yeah. The, the vote that's coming up. Yeah. Well, to me, it's also interesting because, you know, that, that intuition, that's something that you're so passionate about. It's like, it's a, it's a, it's a whisper mm. and it's a, it's a feeling and it's a whisper. But if you're constantly scrolling, constantly watching the news, it's going to be more challenging to listen to that whisper to really hone in as to what action to take. Yeah. What's your truth? What's your feeling on it? What's actually taking that pause and that moment to rest and to have that space when um covid first start and everyone started going into lockdown the amount of messages that i had from people being like oh my gosh my intuition is louder than it has ever been because Mm. i have that time i have that space like i'm not rushing around from a to b all the time but with where we are now, you know, going onto social media, we need that energetic break from social media. It's what I call kind of energetic self-sovereignty. We need to create that space so that we can truly listen to our intuition, so we can truly receive the messages. Because as you said, it come it can come in very subtly. It can come in through the feeling, the knowing the hearing, the seeing, and it can be subtle. And especially when you're first reconnecting to it. So, which is so important while we have this space. Mm, Yeah. I love that, that energetic self-sovereignty, because to me, I call the time away from social media, social media sabbaticals. Mm. And I've been studying this stuff for 14 years. I have my degree in this stuff. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm curious to hear what you feel going into the end of 2020, going into 2021. What are you feeling about social media? And, mm. you know, because to me, I'm, I've talked to so many of my girlfriends in the spiritual community that I see as like woke and actually in their integrity that are all feeling like burnt out from social media. They're feeling tired. They feel like they put so much energy out, but the reciprocity isn't coming back. I would love to hear what you're feeling as to how you see social media evolving into 2021. Yeah, great question. Um, There's gonna be so much change and transformation as we move through into the back end of the year, I think between now and solstice december 21st Mm -hmm. it's going to be very intense the build-up to solstice this year is massive Mm -hmm. um and then as we move through into february of 2021 february is also a really big year um big month energetically um that's gonna unravel and show some things up in 2021 and i think there is a we need to realize that the journey that we're on right now as a collective it doesn't stop the minute the time shifts on the calendar from 2020 to 2021 we're in a four to five year process right now and so this there is more to be revealed and so how do we deal with social media within this when the perceived exterior world becomes more chaotic um there is going to be a lot of fear there's going to be a lot of change it's going to really push people's buttons and i'm not sharing this to create more fear it's just that's what's coming through that's the message and we are all being prepared right now for to be able to deal what is coming um down the pipeline in the collective and so by practicing you know, having um, sabbaticals from social media, practicing your energetic self-sovereignty to really know what your own energy is and so that you can give yourself permission to have a break from social media is going to be really important, but also not feeling that um, you can't be on social media because I feel like there's there's a shift where it's like you go in, you get what you need, you go in and you share or you interact with the people that you truly want to interact with and then you leave. And I think communities are being built off of social media more than ever. Yep. Um, I think people are 
beginning to see the control mechanism. You know, social media is part of a system that is is relatively new and it's amazing and it can connect us on so many levels but i think we need to be working with it more intuitively and also seeing the control that it has on us as well so i think it is we're really beginning to see all the levels of where we're being controlled in society where the systems are controlling it and anything you know that seems to be not inverted free but also that it's like seeing the energy for what it is and tuning into things and being like how does this sit with me how do i practice discernment and that's what using your intuition is going to be really key over the next five to six years yeah five five to six years is like how do i practice discernment what is real to me what's my truth what's my intuition telling me what do i believe about this because we're all going to have our thoughts and opinions. The truth is going to be very different for very many different types of, for, for all of us. The truth is going to have multiple facets to it. And it's going to be about really tuning into your own intuition to, to look into all the energetics behind everything in our world is just going to become really important. Ugh, I feel that so much. And I, I mean, I think like, what I'm feeling into is that there's going to be more and more people actually building their own platforms, like more communities, more spaces where there isn't the algorithm or the noise, or it's just like, I'm seeing it as like a consolidation of energy and a consolidation of communities in a way to like really have a focus and a purpose and like a mission as to like why these people are really gathering together rather than just the unconscious scroll yeah. double tap um you know feeding into whatever addiction that can come from this dopamine hit and yeah. what what social media has really conditioned our brains um as a pattern as an addiction in that sense yeah and then we also feel like we just need to keep feeding the noise mm -hmm. and and feeling that yeah the, the fear of missing out the fear of having to control an algorithm um and i feel you you know i just created my own intuitive community offline for that fact of being like social media is going to become so overwhelming i mean more so than it already is and so people are going to want to be um you know in community um as you say with a mission that they know that they're going in for but also um not creating a spiritual echo chamber and i feel that's really important about how if with all these other communities popping up and everyone finding their like-minded community that they fit in with or that they feel part of it's also really important to look outside of that to look at other people's thoughts and opinions and what they're doing because otherwise we end up in our own vacuum and we don't actually get to see what other people's thoughts and opinions are and so that would that's my only kind of like fear around people being like oh well i'm not going on social media or i'm not i'm not putting myself into the energy of this stuff because it's also really important to know other people's thoughts and beliefs and viewpoints so that totally. you can actually work out what your own are and also yeah, it's part of that, like tuning into your own intuition and being like, oh, that feels good to me. Or, oh, I've never thought about it like that. And kind of thinking about it and getting the flip side. Because if you're only being fed one source of information or one particular viewpoint, you know, you're doing yourself a disservice. And with the way the world is going and the collective is moving, it's also, it's important that you have all viewpoints. Right. And I think that also leads to like the people who go for that of just like tunneled, like closed mindedness are the people that have also have patterns of spiritual bypassing and they don't want to look at that stuff where they learn to trust themselves more, where they learn to have that healthier relationship with their intuition, where they learn to have that discernment. And really to me, that's one, the ultimate form of like building and, and having a deeper sense of self sovereignty. And two, that discernment of yes and no where you can like stand in your power because that's when tests can also come up right like you've done the work and then you have this other opinion of maybe someone you look up to but it doesn't resonate or align to like what your intuition is telling you are you just going to be swayed that way or is, are you going to stand in your power 
and reclaim your power back and say, I appreciate your input, your insight, and I'm going to stay in my truth. Yeah. And those tests are really important and powerful. And it's then it's the, the non-spiritual bypassing and also then the pressure that we then have to we put the gurus and the teachers on pedestals right. and like oh well they know everything that's what they're teaching and and it's like no that's bullshit like you're your own teacher take what you lo- take what you resonate with that you are intuitively getting those like oh hell yes that's bringing me closer to my truth versus pulling me further away from my truth and leaving the rest behind mm-hmm. um yeah, I just... it's a dogma. It's a dogma that I feel like is the last of like the residual of like strong religious upbringings and like conditioning of that inner child of that subconscious. And mm-hmm. so to me, I see the subconscious and the intuition. They also have a, a love hate relationship in a way, you know, and that that programming and that conditioning going through and that root chakra zero to seven subconscious is being formed ancestral things like that and i think that's also part of the uprise that's happening it's like the tower and tarot right it's the dismantling of everything that's actually not in alignment as you said february 2021 aquarius season we're like in the initiation of the true age of aquarius and so that's how I've seen this whole dismantling going on is just literally the last of the purge of the patriarchal systems, the last of the purge of the Piscean age. And we're activating the Aquarian community mindset and to be, but to be part of a community and, and still be strong, like as an individual in that community, you have to know you so you're not swayed into like, I don't want to say like a culty mindset. It's but true. No, it can yeah, be that very way. much so. Yeah. And it's that whole, you know, when you, you're stuck just being fed by what the lead is saying or what you think that the values of that particular community are, it's always about bringing it back to yourself and questioning yourself. And that's the beauty of using your intuition and being in a state of wonder and being in a, in a lifelong learning of questioning. Like if you're not questioning things as you move through your life, like it's time, start questioning. It's, it's important. It's part of how you learn how to connect with yourself. It's about how you learn to discover your shadow side and, and really look at that about questioning yourself and others and the world we live in. And, um, yeah. And it's, and not seeing that it's a bad thing to question things. Cause I know also within society right now, there's a lot of like big group stuff around. Oh, well, if you question something, that means you're, um, that you're a a conspiracy theorist or whatever. And it's like, well, (laughs) hang on a second. That's a big human label, like to put everything on. And I just feel like we're in this space of everything's getting human labeled. Like we're Mm -hmm. just, we are trying to box everybody into, well, you belong to this group and you belong to this and this is this and this is this versus being like, whoa, 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 hang on a second. Are we not getting a bit too OTT with the humans? the human labels for everything right now. And I think that is happening because we do feel the sense of change. We are feeling unsettled. We are feeling panic. We are feeling fear. And so we're trying to find the control mechanisms so that we do feel safe and anchored. And I feel that that is also, that is part of the kind of the labeling that is happening and the kind of distinguishing into groups that we're trying to that we're trying to make sense of it all and it is part of that like needing to feel safe and feeling to feel, needing to feel safe and needing to feel secure well those that labeling is to me like the last grasp of the 3d density the 3d reality because those labels are 3d if we're ascending into 5d unity consciousness and we're still in the middle of the 4d of like time loops and consciousness traps and all these things where we can start to see the patterns and the habits but then we haven't yet embodied it into the 5 5d reality yet to me this feels like it's like the last of like the grasp of the outdated system that's still trying to like you said box us conform us when more and more people, because more people are 
remembering the power of their intuition, they're decalcifying their pineal glands, they're, they've done a lot of the work of loving themselves. Because mm -hmm. to me, it's, it's, it's a lot more challenging to trust your intuition if you don't know how to love yourself. Yeah, because you are your intuitive body and it's like your own energetic intuitive body is giving you the information. So it's this journey of rediscovering who you are and the self and what that's about. And I feel that, you know, I know you're talking about like moving into 3D and 5D and for, you know, all the transitions that, that we're going through. And I think it's also really important that it's like, in my personal opinion of like not trying to feel like we have to transcend out of something versus that it's about anchoring mm -hmm. into the here and now into into the human plane into this human body that we have and that this human body in this human world is is where we create the change it's where we that it the change really happens and I feel like if we focus on kind of feeling like we have to move above something or beyond something, it, it takes out the energy of actually, no, it's kind of more like down and in where it feels like we can really root into this plane in a whole new brand way, uh, in not in even a brand new way in like, in just the way that the energy is supposed to be integrated. It's an integrated way. Yeah. yeah. Because I think the, 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 also the challenge is, is like, yes, five, con like 5d consciousness is a frequency, but as a multidimensional being, we have to be embodied in that we can't bypass that 3d reality as well. Right. That's part of you are a human being having this human experience. Your body density is in this 3d world, like the planet. Mm -hmm how can you learn to have that sovereignty? How can you learn to have that discernment so that the things that come at you, they don't steer you off from your truth, from your sovereignty, from the, the spaces that allow you to accelerate? Because I think that's also part of the spiritual bypassing is that there's no groundedness. Mm -hmm. And those are the people that have been afraid of looking and doing that inner child work, people that have bypass the ancestral conditionings and patterns, but in a way that's like not looking at it yeah. and not, you know, forgiveness and atonement and understanding with compassion that our ancestors have done their best. Mm, and also looking at the systemic oppression that our ancestors have caused if um, you're a white totally. person as well. And it's like, it's seeing the, the unraveling of all of it in, you know, in, unraveling of all of it and just seeing where it wants to go and really beginning to realize like oh I'm here on this planet and I can create change and I I write about this in the book because I feel that one that can feel really daunting that we can create change and two there's a lot of um there's a lot of feeling out there that is is change even possible like is this healing even possible it, how can I create any form of change in my life. And for me, I think it starts with, you know, if you're being in your authentic power, if you're being in your authentic truth, if you're tuning into your intuition and just showing up as you on a day-to-day -day basis, your energy and that creates change, that ripples out into the collective change. And so if you're being authentic for you, you're in a being an example for your family, you're being an example for your friends, your community. Um, and also knowing that everyone's, Thing to do on this planet to create change is different there's a lot of pressure where it feels like oh um should i be the person um you know using my voice or should i be um protesting or should i be creating community events or should i be writing or journaling or creating art whatever it is it's like just trust what you are intuitively being called to do as part of the change to use like inverted commas, like your voice, because everyone's voice and part of the change is different. And right. so it's about trusting that. Yeah. I mean, that's what's driving me more as, you know, helping people with marketing and brand strategy is I'm here to help more of these brands become more ethical, become more conscious of being part of the solution and, and seeing what's going on and choosing to actually take initiative again, rather than just feeling like chasing the fame like how are you using your platform to actually implement real change that will activate a legacy that will live on beyond you know the lifespan of you and your business and I think these mm -hmm. are the things that are really shifting 
in business, in awareness of overall, like the people that are supporting brands that are actually standing up for something as well. And I think each of us have different roles in this collective evolution and expansion and ascension. And this is the time for us to answer and say like, this is where I'm leading. So with that, like what, what was the, the call for you to be like, okay, now it's time for me to write this book. Now it's time for me to like really mm. take the leap and unleash it. Great question. This book has been in the works for the last three years. Um, it's had lots of different, it's always been a book about how to connect people to their intuition. Um, and I kept approaching um, agents to write, um, you know, with the book idea, I was really fixed on it getting published in the more traditional way um, before going with the self-publishing imprint, the Numinous Books, and it being one of the first, it is the first book um, from um, Ruby Warrington and the Numinous. Um, I was so fixed on it being published and I kept getting um, no's or yeah this is really good but no this doesn't fit and one woman replied to me last year and um, was like I really like it but I don't see in its current form how it, it having this the success that you can see Natalie and I was like oh interesting <laughs> and so that led me on a journey to really look at something that I've been really unpacking for myself around the the notion of I choose me and I've spent most of my life waiting to be chosen by other people and this the the book was basically as things began to unfold I got this massive intuitive hit where my guides were like stop waiting to be chosen by others this book needs to come out in 2020 if you go through a publisher which you know you could do it won't come out till 20 2021 2022 and by that point it's too late the message of this book around being in your truth and being in your power needs to come out in 2020 it was so loud and this was like um november of 2019 um so yeah i started writing it in January 2020 and um, finished writing, you know, I started it on winter solstice, December 2019, and I finished it on um, summer solstice. Incredible. So I, wrote, I wrote it solstice to solstice. And honestly, I did a breath work. Um, I did a breath work session um, on winter solstice. And the messages that came through about, they just said, Nat, intuition is the vehicle but there's a, there's another message that's part of this. And I basically kind of channel downloaded everything that's happening right now in the collective and what we're moving through over the next you know, five, six years. And it was like, these themes need to be in this book. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's the book. And what was beautiful was every time I got to a chapter, it was mirrored back to me in the collective. Every <laughs> single chapter, the energy themes were mirrored back. So there's a there's a chapter all about how you to how you should trust your intuition, how you can trust your intuition, how to discern what the fear voice is or the ego voice was. And that was exactly when everything was happening with COVID, when there was so much fear of like what's happening and and how do we tune into our intuition? So it just kept. Um, being mirrored back and as I I'm I, I mean I love the last chapter of the book it's it's one of my favorite um, just because it does talk about intuition in the collective and I knew what I wanted to write in the chat in the book but as I approached that chapter I was like what is gonna go down I was like I just what is gonna happen um, in this and that was when um, everything um, happened with George Floyd and Black Lives Matter and yeah and it's it's been a um, an insane process to write this book in this time frame but just it has been such an intuitive led practice it has been such an intuitively written book and it is part of the mission to um, yeah make intuition accessible make mm. it that you don't need it's not elite or for some elite a privileged part of society it's for everybody and that we're going to need it more than ever as we move through this time yeah i mean it's gonna i'm really fascinated to see more of what comes out from the shit show that's been 2020 
Because mm. I think of it like when I'm, I'm, like I said, when I was sharing with you before, like as we record this, the next coming weeks, I'm finishing the second draft of my book. And my intention was to be in Bali to write the book. And then I flew back home like two days before the shutdown happened. So I would have missed all of that medicine that came during quarantine. And I think that's part of the things that when you're writing a book, when it's like you're putting something out there, you had to just continue to be in that space of surrender and trust that what medicine is supposed to come through will arise. What medicine is supposed to be, you know, addressed and brought to light, it's going to happen when it's supposed to happen. Mm, yeah. And that you're taking on the energy of what's happening in the collective. It's right. like any form of creativity and flow. It's, it's, yeah, it's such a full energetic circle of what you want to create and what the universe wants to create through you and kind of trusting and surrendering that process. Because if the idea of the, what I had, what the book would be three years ago is very, very different. I mean, the outline is still there, but the energy and the themes and the overall kind of message that comes through is very different because there is a sense of me trusting that this is when I was supposed to write the book. That this is when it was supposed to be channeled through and within the energy of, yeah, what wanted to come through too. Yeah. And I mean, I'm curious to to see what you had to say, because like you said, you were planning on trying to sell it to other publishers and then Ruby graces through with creating a self-publishing. She's still been one of my favorite podcast interviews that I've done on, on this podcast years ago. And I mean, what are you seeing? Do you feel like more and more people will be continued to be on the path of the self-publishing because they, there's no um, putting people in a box, their ideas, like you said, people that kept saying no, no, no to you, when you know yeah. that your, your medicine, this book is a, is a sacred disruption. Mm -hmm. And it's being in your own self-sovereignty. It's being in your own power. It's realizing that I think more people realizing, no, I want to put that in my book or um, authors that have to audition to have their own audio books. Like if you're a, a published author through a traditional house, you have to um, audition to be able to read your book. And if they deem that your voice isn't right, they will, they say that you can't read it. Or if you want to pick the cover of your book and it doesn't, and they like don't like what you want, they'll change it. Or you want to use a certain word in your book and they don't, you know, they're like, no, you can't use that word. Right. They have the final say. And I think that's the, again, it's part of that, you know, the publishing system is a system that is also there to be broken. And just in my own journey in self-publishing in this short amount of time, it's also set up for the publishing houses still. As much as, you know, self-publishing is amazing, but the back-end systems are also still there to, you know, you realize how much money is, you know, pumped into these things with Amazon that the right. publishing houses give to get the books out there. So it's this, it is a, um, a an unraveling that is happening. And I think you can see that from, you know, um, Taylor Swift doing her thing with her music and being like, no, I own all the rights to my music. Same with Maggie Rogers. Like when she signed to her label, she was like, yeah, but I want to, I'm putting into my contract that I own all the rights to my music. I think it's creatives and, and writers, whether it's in, in all forms are realizing like, no, uh, this, you know, this was created through me and I've channeled this and I want to, you know, have that sovereignty around it. Yeah, because that's also like, I think when you're talking about that, I'm thinking a lot as, you know, we're recording this, there's so much talk right now about like Joe Rogan being censored with Spotify. Mm -hmm. And to me, I've seen a lot of censorship happening from speaking my truth. And I know that's, that was always like a, a thing that was really weary about whether or not like I go on the publishing route or the self-publishing because I know my story is controversial. And I know there's things I talk about that probably you know, publishers that have, are in the system, like we see in politics, where they're trying to please all these different groups and organizations that fund so much money, whether it be mm -hmm. written in their books or whatever, they have 
like a seniority or they're just swayed by these other outside voices that are actually losing the integrity of the conversation of the artist. Because if you're, you're, to me, authors are still artists, like your book is your art. And so this is a way that we need to continue to stand behind art and how we need to continue. Because to me, I feel like what's happening is an art renaissance in many forms as well. Mm, yeah, very much so. I think there is this new creative flow that's coming in that people are like, oh no, I really want to talk about this or I'm going to do this my oh, I've I always had this vision and you know what, I'm going to make it happen. I feel like there is this, yeah, as you say, creative resurgence in a whole brand new way. But again, but with the duality and the flip side of that is also the, no, you can't say that. And no, we're taking that down. And no, you can't use that word. And again, it's the this element of free speech and what does free speech actually mean is going to keep coming up and that's going to bring up a lot of opinions for people and differing again it's back to us talking about differing thoughts and opinions and and being like yeah what is censorship in this world that we live on with social media it's it's back into like who decides what yeah like who decides what the truth is it's, I don't know about you, but I feel like I've just been sitting here eating my popcorn, like watching all of this unfold because shit's crazy. <laughs> it, it really is. And it just feels like we've only like just taken the top of the iceberg. Like totally. there's so much more to come. And I just, um, and it is, it is watching it unravel and being like, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. I see this, but for and for what I'm channeling through, it's just very much like it's good. the truth is going to be different for everybody, but it's knowing, looking behind the energetics of things is going to be really, really important. There's a lot of distortion happening on our planet right now, and it's looking into the distortion um, across all levels of everything um, and and using your intuition to look into the energetics in behind things and into the distortion. Yes, because the people who've been productive and proactive on their healing journey of doing that deeper work, like the deep, deep work, they're gonna they're able to navigate through this with a lot more ease and grace because the thing that I'm really try to help people remember is that the shitty times or the challenges or maybe when you may have been infiltrated or um, steered wrong or you know these other kinds of things then you woke up from that instead of feeling like victimized of what happened to you now you should find that as a blessing that you have the discernment to recognize the distortions to say yes or no to listen to your intuition and sometimes we we dove into these situations where we didn't listen to our intuition mm. because the ego took over but from that there is such medicine and wisdom that can help other people like wake up but everyone of course has free will and it's everyone's on their own journey but when it comes to your journey because of those experiences maybe when you didn't listen to your intuition seeing what's going on you can have that discernment say no thank you and again reclaim your sovereignty from those spaces yeah very much so it is practicing the discernment and using your intuition to do that and and also for me personally it's also like there is always a place for science in the world and that i feel like there is this space where everyone's like the difference between like science and intuition as well like how do you practice your intuition and list and have a, like science again it's that human labeling of everything's got to fit into a box or you have to choose between one and the other or choose to follow God or listen to your intuition or whatever it is, it becomes this like separation all the time. And it's really about bringing it back to you and your path and your journey. And as you said, what you've learned along the way and those, those times where you feel like, oh, I didn't listen or, oh, I did something wrong. Um, does that mean I didn't listen to my intuition right? Does that mean that I messed up? It's like, no, because sometimes our intuition can guide us to do 
to a situation or an experience so that we can learn from our shadows, so that we can learn ourselves from that moment. Like by following your intuition, it doesn't mean that everything's going to be like sparkly and new and everything's going to be wonderful and you're just going to keep following this amazing path and you're just going to manifest and call in everything that you want. It's like, that doesn't, it doesn't work like that, but it's knowing that the intuitive messages that you're getting are taking you to that deeper level of understanding about yourself. Yes. I love that. And so, oh man, I just think more and more people are going to be tapping more into this as the years come, as we like really anchor in more of the Aquarian age, as we continue to purge out the last of the Piscean patriarchal systems that are actually not in alignment with the evolution of humanity. But to wrap all this up, this has been so incredible and deep. And I thank you for going there with me because this is, <laughs> these are the like type of conversations I'm calling in. I can't do like surface level. No, really oh, it drives me <laughs> bonkers. So I appreciate you. But I want to wrap up with some lightning round questions. Yeah, so, go for talking it. Talking about this, what does sovereignty mean to you? Um, sovereignty for me means me standing in my own truth and power using my intuition and knowing what my own energy is. Amazing. What would you say has been an animal totem that's been really guiding you lately? Mm, yeah, um, I've been seeing a lot of eagles and hawks recently. And for me, it's been about getting perspective and um, and channeling through the kind of perspective of what's happening. And for me to gain greater perspective of the work and kind of, yeah, changing my viewpoints and getting it from a, looking at things on different angles that just feels what's been coming up for me. Amazing. Since you're an astrologer, tell us your sun, moon, rising sign. Oh, um, I am a Leo sun, Virgo rising, cancer moon. Mm. Gemini, Sun, Virgo, Moon, can uh, and, and Leo rising. Hey. <laughs> oh, hey. We get it. <laughs> what would you say to younger Natalie? I choose me. <laughs> and where can we find more of you? We've got, you know, the So You Think You're Intuitive podcast, the book. Tell us where we can find more of you. Yeah, you can find more of me, um, Instagram, I am Natalie Miles. Um, you can find more about, yeah, the intuitive community. And if you're interested in joining a community full of intuitives talking about intuition, um, yeah, that's on youareintuitive.com. And yeah, my website, natalie-miles.com. Um, yeah, all the different avenues happening right now and sharing. So yeah, it's, um, it's a journey, but those are the main places you can find me. Amazing. And what little last nugget of wisdom do you want to share to anyone who's listening? Keep anchored during this time and bring in all the practices that you've been learning over this time. Then they're, they're no longer practices. They are action doing points to help you anchor in during these challenging and transformational times. I love that. Well, thank you, Natalie. Again, congrats on the book. I, it's a big you. feat. And I'm sure they'll after this one, I'll just like the floodgates are open for more books to come as well. Oh, don't. They're already knocking on my door. That's what happens. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, are we going to write this one? I'm like, okay, back off people. I need to, let's just get this one out. Yeah, <laughs> totally. You just, you also, the intuition is telling you that you're, you're really embarking on the path of being an author. So yeah, which is um, exciting and also daunting and scary at the same time. <laughs> Got this. I'm not worried about you. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in. And thanks again, Natalie. Go check out her book and you are intuitive and go check out her podcast. So you think you're intuitive and excited to see what else comes from all of this. But thanks again for being here and we'll be catching you soon. Take care. <laughs>